Senator Ashley Godot is on assignment tonight, and we're just finishing the first day of the historic impeachment trial of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Quite a day it has been at the state capitol today. The proceedings started this morning with the swearing in of Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who is the presiding officer for this trial. One by one, 30 senators also took the oath to serve as the jurors. The senators then voted and Lieutenant Governor Patrick ruled on pre-trial motions. Tony Busby, Paxton's attorney, entered a plea of not guilty to the 16 articles of impeachment the Senate is hearing in this trial. After a lunch break, opening statements and the House managers starting to present their case against Ken Paxton. KBS Ford Sanders covering the trial for us at the state capitol today. Joins us now with a breakdown of today's proceedings that just ended moments ago go right Ford. Absolutely, Brian and Quita. It's just the first day of trial, but we're already seeing sparks fly between the House managers, attorneys and Ken Paxson's defense team. Now, before opening statements could start, the Senate had to rule on a flurry of pretrial motions that took nearly three hours. Now, the Senate voted overwhelmingly to deny all of the motions from Attorney General Paxson's defense team that would have dismissed one or all of the articles of impeachment against him. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick did side with the defense team in one instance, granting a motion to block the House managers from calling Paxton to testify. After a brief break, it was time for the Attorney General to enter his plea to the charges. Well, Tony Busby, that's Paxton's attorney, he actually spoke for him, pleading not guilty. About an hour later, it was time for opening statements. Paxton was noticeably absent. Republican State Representative Andrew Murr, chair of the House Board of Managers, started to lay out their case against Paxton. Many times, Mr. Paxton would ditch his security detail. And Nate Paul even set up a secret Uber account that allowed Mr. Paxton to secretly visit Nate Paul and others. To conceal his efforts, Mr. Paxton communicated in off-the-book ways, using burner phones, encrypted messaging apps, and secret email addresses. Paxton's defense attorneys, Tony Busby and Dan Cogdell, pass passionately delivered opening statements, calling the allegations, quote, foolishness, and false. Now, they also tried to cast doubt on the whistleblowers, the attorneys selected by Paxton to serve in his office, who reported their boss to federal officials. If you're a subordinate and you disagree with your boss's course of action, you raise it with her or him, and if there's still a disagreement, you resign. That's how it works. And in his opening, Busby noted the House managers are going to have to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. He made a big statement. He was telling senators that the evidence he has will prove that those allegations are false. Now, moving forward, each side is going to get their 24 hours to present their case. Live from the Capitol, Ford Sanders, KVU News. An eventful day for sure. Ford Sanders, thanks for that reporting from the Capitol today. And managing editor of political content, Ashley Godot, is following the trial. She's been following it from the very beginning, and she joins us now to break down the elements of what's going on. And mm -hmm. Ashley, what really stood out to you during today's trial? Oh, th there was a lot. I think first we definitely want to tell our viewers about the last thing that happened in this trial. So we were hearing from the first witness, who is Jeff Mateer. He is a former first assistant to Ken Paxton, and he was talking about his relationship with Ken Paxton and what was happening and, and how he specifically told him to stay away from Nate Paul, that he did not know Nate Paul. He wanted him to, to stay away from him. And so they ended the trial today as they were trying to debate a motion as to whether or not they were going to allow a piece of evidence, an email to be submitted. And we got no answer on that. We'll have to see what happens tomorrow morning at nine. But I think one of the things that really stood out to me is the most obvious. It's Ken Paxton. That is what stood out to me in this trial and Ken Paxton's silence during this trial. He had the opportunity to, at the very least, answer to how he pled on the, uh, the articles. Instead, Tony Busby answering for him, pleading not guilty to all of those articles and not just pleading not guilty, but adding a little bit of, uh, you know, commentary to those pleas. And that is what really caused some back and forth between him and Rusty Harden. Let's take a look. Attorney General Paxton, how do you plead? Everything she said there, sir, is legally and factually incorrect. And therefore, Attorney General Ken Paxton pleads not guilty. The Attorney General is innocent of those charges and pleads not guilty. 
Those allegations are flat out false. The Attorney General pleads not guilty. Those allegations are offensive and false. The Attorney General pleads not guilty. If he wants to take the stand and testify, we'll be welcome that. But otherwise, this is supposed to be a plea from the client. He can enter a plea of not guilty for his client. He can't make speeches as he's doing now, and I object. Uh, sustained. So while that was sustained, the clerk read the next article, and this is how Blesby answered. Attorney General Paxton, how do you plead? Absolutely not guilty. So not quite just that guilt or not, not guilt. And again, that speaks to the showmanship of these attorneys that we are going to see. And you can expect to see a lot of showmanship between big names like Rusty Harden and Tony Busby. Also notable, though, Ken Paxton did not return after the lunch break. So opening statements, the calling of the first witness, he's not in the courtroom and the rules that the senators pass don't require him to be in the courtroom. So it certainly speaks to what this means and what message is he trying to send about this impeachment and about this impeachment trial. And we're going to uh, dive a little bit more, have a little more analysis for that on you, for you at six. All right, this is a show, as you called it, that's going to continue on for quite a while. Thanks, Ashley. We'll see you again at six. A mm -hmm. lot to digest today, no yeah. doubt about. Members of the public are allowed in the Senate gallery to watch the impeachment trial in the Senate chamber. Some viewers lining up early this morning to try and secure tickets to watch this trial. One observer claims the trial is helping tackle corruption he believes is growing across the country. They're concerned Republicans that brought this to the um, forefront, not Democrats. And this isn't a political witch hunt. This is holding Republicans accountable for their corruption. Other observers believe the process leading up to Paxton's official impeachment was flawed and showed up to protest the proceedings. We are here today to impose the impeach, oppose the impeachment of General Paxton because of the process, not because of anything General Paxton has or has not done. It's about the process that was unconstitutional, it was illegal, and it was rushed, and we cannot let that stand. Again, those were observers today. The Texas Politics Project took a poll this year asking opinions on whether the suspended attorney general's action, actions justify his impeachment. Democrats overwhelmingly said yes, with 71 percent. Forty two percent of independents said yes. Uh, Republicans were more evenly split in their opinion. Four, uh, Twenty four percent said yes. Thirty two percent said no. And KVU will be providing gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the impeachment trial. Managing editor, editor of Political Content, Ashley Godot, and senior reporter Tony Blohetsky will both have in-depth analysis of the proceedings every day of the trial. And you can watch the proceedings and their commentary on KVU Plus and on our website, kvu.com.